a nation. Hebrew Kingdom Building. Can y'all believe that Bill is doing a PowerPoint? Don't talk too long. These men came to the house last night, so you know, it was still not here. Still got my coat. How are you? How are you? But what we're bringing out, and uh, it's going to be collective. So y'all bear with us, okay? We want to let the Ruach lead us, of course. Uh, the title of the lesson is Reverencing the Altar, What Type of Vessel Are You? So with that being said, I have the part of reverence. And so when I bring this out, I want us to understand how important it is for us to reverence Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Because without it, the other things, they don't really matter. So you have to have reverence for Yahuwah in order for these other things to fall in line. All right? But understanding reverence is two forms of reverence. You have fear and you have worship. Now we saw fear at Shavuot. Okay? I call it Shavuot hashtag scared straight. Alright? Because I'm going to be honest. Moray brought it out. But you had people that went up to confess certain things that the chief didn't even they didn't even have to come in to confess those things. He said he was looking for what? So why? Or the pornography. Why are you going up there? Fear and a point. But it's got to get to a point, Miss Parker, where you you don't fear your whoa to an extent. You would fear him to an extent to where it's worship. Okay? Because he is a father. A father don't want his son coming to him in fear. I hear Moray talk about this. You want to be respect hallelujah. hallelujah but because of them came up there and confessed that shows you they have a different reference for Yahuwah because if they had true reference for Yahuwah and loved Yahuwah they would have got that straight before Shavuot because you came to Shavuot with that do we not understand what happened in Pesach we heard it again to remind us today. I need an oct to give me 1 Corinthians 11 and 27. 1 Corinthians 11 and 27. Because they could have been good. They really could have been. But it was an appointed time and it was fear. And I'm going to be honest, some people... So people walked up there, but they heard that judgment, they stopped. They stopped. You had, I saw them. It was so. But they stopped. Because they heard judgment. But that don't mean judgment still can't fall. Because Chief Yahushua brought this out. He said, just because you didn't drive there today, don't mean you won't drive your car next week and something happened to you. And I'm not wishing that on nobody. But be mindful of you confessing and not being true repentant. Because some people think confession is just all they need to do, like Boray said. That's Christianity. Just believe. No, you gotta have some work. So we have to be mindful of that. Uh, who got 1 Corinthians 11 and 27? Uh, bring it out, Moray, please. Who are therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of Adonai in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of your What? 
Whoever drinks the blood and what more? Whoever drinks the cup of you should drink the cup in an unworthy man. Mm -hmm. will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of our Adam now. Do y'all know what that is? That's doing what? That's coming into covenant, y'all. Mm -hmm. That what he's saying is coming into covenant with him. So in Pesach, we came into covenant. Right. Why would you come there drinking that cup knowing you unworthy? Mm -hmm. Why would you come to Shabbat like that? Right. That means what? Your reverence for Yahuwah is fear, not worship. It's a difference. Let's get into it. Let's go to uh, the first slide. I'm sorry, Mr. God, I gotta turn my back on y'all. We do. Proverbs chapter one, verse seven says, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. All right, growing up, my dad, I had an old school dad, right? Came home, to the bath, went to bed. No inaction. But that was love to him, because that's how he was raised, right? So, the understanding that I had from him was, you know, you gonna get a whooping when your dad get home? Y'all know that? Oh yeah. No conversation, come here. No interaction, come in. So I had a what for my dad? A fear of my dad. It wasn't a reference of respect for my dad. But as I got older and I saw the discipline, because I deserved the whooping though, but I saw the discipline of the whooping that it was good for me, then I could understand the reverence. And then I started to what? Respect my dad. So in the beginning, Yahuwah puts a fear in us, but that fear is not supposed to stay. It's supposed to turn into something. It's supposed to turn into a reverence of worship or homage. Okay? Uh, let's get the next slide. Exodus chapter 20, 18 through 21, it says, now when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of the lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled. And they stood far off and said to Moshe, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let Elua speak to us, lest we die. Moshe said to the people, do not fear, for Yahuwah has come to test you that the fear of him may be before you that you may not do what? So he don't have to discipline you. Right? Because you got the good and then you got the curses. So with that being said, it's a disciplinary act that comes with this. But we have to understand it's the fear that he instills in us at first. But he's still a father who what? Wants us to be right. That's right. Right? That's right. Let's move to the next slide. I need to slow down. Okay. All right, y'all jump in too, man. All right, because you next. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Genesis chapter twenty-two, five through nine. Then Abraham to, uh, said to his young men, "Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you." And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took his hand, the fire and the knife, wait. And he took in his hand, the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, Allah will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. When they came to a place of which Elua had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order, in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on the top of the wood. So, now, go ahead. 
Scripture. So it's, 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 it's certain, certain things I want you to pay attention to in the Scripture. Alright? There's certain things we want you to catch in the Scripture. So, it says, for one, I will just reread this. I want you to catch something. Then Abraham said to his young man, stay here with the donkey. I am what we're going to do what? Worship. Going to do what? Worship. They put that in your ruach. Yeah. Worship. We ain't talking about just clapping and singing and reverence. Say reverence. Reverence. And come again to you. And Abraham took the wood. Say the wood. The wood. Put that in your ruach. Of the burnt offering and laid it where? Oh, lady, where? Put that in your room. And he took his hand, he took in his hand a fire and a knife, so they both went of them together. And I said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, Yah will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them together, and they came to the place in which what? Yah had told him. Yah had told him. It's important to be in a certain place where you all told you. Because he just told Abraham to go up. He ain't telling him which mountain. Well, that's a whole other story. He went by faith. He just said, go up. It's a lot of mountains. So they went both up together. When they came to the place in which Yah had told them, Abraham built there a what? What he built? And he laid the wood in order and bound Isaac and his son, and he laid him on the altar. And what? Mm. At first, the wood was on top of him. Now, he's on top of the wood. Put that in your ruler. Go ahead. So we see the form of worship, right? And how Moray broke this down, we're gonna get into it when we get to Kohen with the altar, okay? But understand the difference between two different references of fear and worship, okay? Let's go to the next slide. First Corinthians chapter three, nine through 17. For we are a lowest fellow workers. You are a lowest field. Yahuwah's building. Now pay attention to that. Yahuwah's what? Building. His building. Now we've been talking about a home, right? According to the grace of the Lord given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation. You already know who the foundation is, right? Oh, sure. And someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care of how he builds upon it. All right, all right. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Yahushua Hamashiach. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, Oh, slow down. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. Put that in your ruach. Mm -hmm. If anyone builds with gold, silver, precious stones, then what else? Wood, hay, straw. Put that in your ruach. Each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by what? Fire. Fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. So you're going to put your works to the test. Are oh, you ready now? All right, we're coming. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. Though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. So he got to Regardless of what you are 
You're going through that fire. Do you not know that you are a Lord's temple and that your Hua spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys your Hua's temple, your Hua will destroy him. For a Lord's temple is Kodesh only, and you are that temple. But you got to have a work for him to understand this. All right? Y'all want to get into this? So understand why we're rejoicing about the temple. You better understand the sacred space. We've been touching, we've been just, you know, tapping it in the mouth the last three weeks. But remember, a temple is not a temple unless you're always dwelling in it. That's right. That's right. Okay. right. That's right. A temple, let me, let me correct that. You all want me to correct that. A temple is not a temple unless an Elohim is dwelling in it. Oh, somebody may catch that. So it don't have to be a Hua dwelling in to order to be a temple. It could be another Lord. It could be another Elohim dwelling in. Put that in your Hua. Yeah, you put a lot of stuff in your Hua right now. It's righteous. Go ahead. I said, why don't you? Come on, Ray, you good. You want to live back? Next slide. All right, here we go. The reverence, the altar, and the vessel. By understanding reverence, the altar and the vessels that goes into the temple, we better understand what? Our function. Our function. I'm going to read that. Again. By understanding reverence, the altar and the vessel that goes into the temple, we better understand our function. Hallelujah. Because everything cannot go in a certain place That's in right. the temple. Temple. Certain things can only go certain places in the temple. All right. Point two. Many people don't truly understand what it means to have reverence for God. They don't. They again. They think you know confessing, bringing that out. They think just confessing. They told. Not understand that man Yahuwah is a man of war. That's what the scripture says. El Shaddai. Some don't understand the importance of the altar within the temple. Oh, he ain't gonna bring that out as gangsters. Because the altar is very important to understand the altar. It is a spiritual significance. To understand that it's altered. You know the most high don't do nothing just to be doing something. Everything has a purpose and a function. And some must understand the types of vessels that they are allowed in the temple. I'm going to read that again because I read that fast. And some must understand the type of vessels that are allowed in the temple. So again, not everything is allowed in the temple. Vessels. Who are the vessels? I'm going to bring Isaiah 66. Okay. So, again, these, because I don't want to get into cohens. Okay. The reverence for the vessels. Okay. As, oh, she. And some must understand the type of vessels that are allowed in the temple. Do we understand again certain vessels are allowed in the temple? Yeah. Not all vessels are allowed in the temple. That's right. Certain things, and they had to be what? Codex. Codex. Yes. Consecrated. 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 Right? Yes. By understanding the importance of these three things, it will be very easy for us to create a sacred space for Yah. I'm going to read that again. 
By understanding the importance of these three things, it will be very easy for us to create a sacred space for Yah. Reverence, altar, vessel. Got to have reverence for Yahuwah. And Kohen is going to break down the function of the altar and what the significance of the altar is to create this sacred space for Yah. So I want to elaborate on the sacred space. Okay, I want you to go back to creation. Right? Creation was the most high design and put things in function. Hey, what? What did he want to create? A home. Say a home. Because he wanted to do day seven. What was day seven about? Rest. He wanted to create a home so he could rest. So he put function and functionalities in place so that he could create a place of order so he could come and rest. Once that place became order, it became the sacred space. Therefore, Yahuwah can come there and do what? Live. Say live. Yeah. See, once things are functioning in the right function, that's worship. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Yahuwah inhabits, he lives in the praises of his so understand, you create a sacred space once you are in the right function and doing what you are created to do. Because worship, which you don't talk about, but worship is conforming to the image that Yahuwah created you to be. That's why homosexual and lesbian can't give you out your worship. Because they can come out here and praise, dance, war, but they are not conformed to the image that he created him to be. They try to be a woman, but he created him as a man. So understand, it's about creating the sacred space. It's about building a temple, but the temple, remember, Solomon built the temple. But it wasn't a temple until you all came and lived in it. It was just a building that looked nice and looked beautiful. But until the functions and the functionalities came in, then you would say, okay, this is the place where I can rest. You've got to understand that's why it's important for you to get in your function. Because we are waiting for the functions to get in place so the functionalities, which is your children, can operate through you so you will come and rest. Hey, I ain't hear me. It's the go, 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 go. Let's get an understanding of the re of what reverence is. All right, I'm gonna get two or three people. What is fear? Big up. Beginning to know y'all. I like it. I like it. What else is fear? Come on, what's fear? Scared. 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 Right. Scared. Right. Frightened. Say bugs, Maury. Huh? Say bugs. What bugs? Yeah. <laughs> Fine roaches. <laughs> Coach, you had some. Uh, I was watching a more Mellow one yesterday. I also fear is an idol. That's why you would say, um, uh, Kawi is just a shaman. Hallelujah. So we have the Hebrew word for fear. It is Yare or Yara, which is Strong 3374. Again, fear, terror, or fear. And that's the old. The rest, the aleph in the head. Come. Come. Proverbs 1 and 7, the God brought it out. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That's right. So again, the beginning of wisdom is what? Fear. fear. But it's a point to where fear is supposed to take you somewhere, though. Okay? Because you got some people that fear you because they don't want to go to hell. 
that's 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 not worshiping your will. You just don't want to go to hell. Y'all hear that, right? right. Uh -huh. So we got to know it's two reverence forms of worshiping or reverencing Yahuwah. Because again, he don't want you to fear him like that. He is a father. Let's get that. It's just a father. Let's get Exodus 34. It's not up there. Exodus 34, 6 and 7. Go ahead. One of y'all grab that while I say this. So fear, understand. Fear, put this scripture in your room. This is all going to come together. Fear is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. So like Abedil said, fear is designed to take you to a certain place. No one came to Yahuwah just based off of knowledge. You had to fear him. You had to fear him. What did you have to fear? You realize you're a sinner. You realize you had a spiritual illness. And you need healing because you knew that sin, the wages of that, was death. And you didn't want to die, so you would be old. Out of fear. We talking about we we talking about the first day you came to your probably day two and three weapons started to form, but that moment you were scared. That's right. That's right. Ain't even because you loved him, because you didn't even really know him like that. I know you get to tell, oh, I just love you. Man. I just been loving him since no, he was scared. You feared him. Hold on, this is a bigger being up there that can kill me. That said I can go to hell. Oh no, 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 no. Hell. What must I do to be saved? Acts chapter one, right? They were talking when Acts chapter two. Peter saw put it's like, man, this very same Mashiach that's coming. That's the one. That's the one y'all crucified. The Bible said we'll break that day off. Okay, what must we do to fix this? No. Say repent. Repent. Go ahead. Exodus 34 and 6. Yahuwah passed before him and proclaimed, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, and Yahuwah, merciful, gracious, slow to anger. And abundant in steadfast love and faithfulness. Keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin. But who will who will by no means clear the guilty? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children, and then the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. That's the father. So it's to a point where he don't want you to fear him no more. He don't want us to be in that mindset. He wants you to be humble to be around him. Not scared to be around him. So turn that to your children now. When your child was younger, the reason why, I praise everybody, the reason why your child listened to you is out of fear. So you want to get no whooping. That's right. I think we started at what, 10 months, right? That was our. <laughs> 10 months? We, we get that, we get that knuckle. That's right. And boys, I get that hand out. Pop, 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 pop. We do that. Then as it, you know, as he got older, you know, the hand came and then now, you know, he built like a grown man. I got the, you know, it was the belt, the bone, now it's the fist, right? <laughs> But your child start listening to you first out of fear. That fear eventually grew to reverence. How? Because your child realized my daddy or my mom is not just here to punish me. They love me too. I always ask my sons, and the deal brought it up. I've been asking them since they've been little. I started with my oldest. I said, do you fear me or respect me? And begin, they like, man, dad, I fear you. I said, no, don't fear no man. Because I want you to respect me, though, because fear only lasts for so long. Because one day, which I pray, though, you might want to get foggy and leave. That fear may leave you. But if you respect me, you ain't never going to do it. So respect has to override fear. Fear is designed. 
Now we to take you to that place. Right. The beginning of wisdom and knowledge is the fear of your own God. And we see that with our people throughout the scriptures. Because they would, Yahuwah would just discipline them as a nation. So it was no what? No reference. So they would just get caught in their own will. Ain't nothing happening, so they I'm just keep doing what I'm doing. Not knowing he's going to do what I can say, visit the iniquity of those. He's, that's just grace and giving you. But you know, Israel, we still make a rebellious and we take that for granted. But fear is the beginning. So the beginning ain't the end. So he's trying to get you somewhere. Come on, boy. What is reverence? Reverence is Shekai, Strong's. Well, uh, that is the sheen and the what? That is the check, the hay, and the and the sheen check hay. Strong seven eight one two to what? Bow down, pay homage, reverence. This is where he trying to get us. This is what Abba is trying to get his children. All right, let's go, boy. Genesis 22 and 5. You got something? Yeah, let me add something to that. Um, so a lot of us have Yari. I mean, Ye, what is it? Yari for Yahuwah. But we don't have Shekai for you. All right. But we have Shekai for the leader that Yahuwah pointed to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why? Because around him or around you, around wherever the leaders are, you're on your best behavior. Right. But when out. you leave here, and because your leader's eyes is not on you, you do what you want to do. Not realizing that your whore is still watching. So we need to have Shekinah for your whore. We need to have respect for your whore. Because he sees all. That's why everything done in the dark comes to the light. I just want to add that. Uh, yeah. So, so, let me land back on that. Because some people just took that and said, well, yeah, I shouldn't have no more respect for the leader. That ain't what that's saying. You still maintain that respect, but you should have even more respect for the leader. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have, like you ever said, you have respect for your whore. Everything is going to fall in line. Genesis 22 and 5. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, and I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. That word worship here is Shekinah. It's not Yireh, which is afraid. So he had the mindset of going before Yahuwah in, in, in homage, in, in, um, in reverence to Yahuwah. Not coming again afraid. We cannot go before Yahuwah afraid. What the scripture says, it says you ask for something, but you ask in a what? A mist. You ask afraid. You don't really want it. You don't really want it. You 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 scared to ask for it. Because if your child come up to you and say, and they timid, you don't really want that. You don't. But if it comes in reverence to you, you act different even towards your child. It's a different mindset. But you should ask yourself if your child is coming to you like that, why are you acting your way to it? Because it's supposed to be a level of respect between you and your children. Shaka. All right? Your rate is designed to bring you to what? Shaka. He tells us all throughout the scriptures, fear. Fear me. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Here's the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear me and keep my commandments. Because if you do this, it's going to bring you to a place where is that place? Because we're trying to get to what? We're trying to get off the milk. We're trying to get off that milk, right? We're trying to get to know Yahuwah. Shekah brings you to knowing Yahuwah. Your way is just saying you're scared. You don't really know him. 
You just doing it out of what? Fear. But when you Shekai him, man, you know him. That's a relationship. Now he becomes provider, protector, healer. He becomes these things. These attributes that a father is supposed to be. Because the last thing he is is an abusive father. No, he's not that. He's a just father. But at the same time, man, he gonna give you that smoke. But what kind of altar and what kind of vessel are you? And I'm a, I think that's it on me. Is that it? Anybody got anything else? And I'm gonna put the lamb back real quick. Because we got to look at all what we what we what he's bringing out. We got to look at the function. We're looking at function, right? So, uh, Uray and Shaka, they have a function. Uray has a function. Uray's function is to what? Bring you to Shaka, right? Milk has a function. Milk's function is to bring you to solid food, right? Faith. As a function. Faith function is to bring you to the knowing. So all these things have a function. Everything that he has provided for us, we have to understand, we got to get an understanding of how it functions. So that we can understand how we function. Hallelujah. So again, it's about reference, Ms. Paka. He does not want us to be your ray with him. Your ray is something that in the beginning, he just does it to what? Get you to a point to Chicago. Hallelujah. 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 Let, me, let, me, let me land back quickly on that. So if you look at Genesis 1, this is going back to Genesis 1. It says, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Now that word Elohim is tied to judgment. Mm -hmm. It's a fear there. Now I ain't gonna get into this because we did a lesson on it. I ain't about to ask you to watch it. Because I broke down how Yahuwah came to Moshe in a certain name, but he came to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob That's right. That's right. That's right. So remember when you call forth Yahuwah's name, it's a function. You're calling forth that function. So in a sense, he created heaven and earth. He created it. He created the, the heavens and the earth with strict judgment. As Elohim. When we're on my board, we're talking about fear. He created it with straight fear. That's like everything with nature is swift. You can't play with gravity. Because it'll judge you quick. Right? Go off, off the building if you want. Quick judging. Because it was made by Elohim. But then when he got down to man, he was called Yahoo. But grace and mercy. Oh, I ain't going to get to it. He was created. Yahuwah, now Lua, he created man in. He created them with grace and mercy. He didn't create man with strict judgment because he knew man was going to fall short. And if he had created them with strict judgment, man would have failed. But that's an old other lesson. But that's showing you fear in the beginning equates to reverence or worship at the end. That's where Yahuwah was trying to get you to. That type of fear. Reverence, not just being scared, but reverence. Say reverence. Hallelujah. So when was the lamb slain? Grace and mercy. Already. Hallelujah. Alright, how many of y'all understand?
understand reference. Everybody got to understand that reference, right? Uh, yeah. All right, so before we move forward, we need anyone to understand that reference. But I really need y'all to understand what we're about to go to about this altar. Because the main goal is to create the what? The sacred place. If we don't get that, we're going to miss this whole thing. All right? All right, so Yahuwah said, well, Yahushua and Yahuwah said, we just bring it out here that you are the temple, right? Right. All right, I'm going to take one individual, that's it. Name me some of the places and the functions that are in the temple. Come on. One person. Come on, one person. Come on, priest. Name me some of the functions. Oh, y'all, no, you know. All right. Uh, you know. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, offering up the burnt, uh, burnt house. All right. All right, I'm looking for the offering. You know this. All right, I'm looking for the offering. Places. Name me three, four places I'm looking for. That's involved with the temple. Go ahead. Oh, you was on the call. Yeah. Go ahead. Table of showbread. Okay. You have the. Uh, Where was that? It's it's if you're looking at the if you're looking at the uh. It's, 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 it's the inner court. Yeah, it's in the middle court. Okay. It's the, I'm talking about the middle court, inner court, not right. like the holy place. Right. Okay. Then it's the uh, it's the candlestick. And it's the altar of incense. All right, it's that's all the good answers. That's all good answers. Then, or oh, you want to four then? That's fine. That's fine. Okay. 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 Hallelujah! While well, looking for is different places, so we have a house. In a house, we have a living room, a dining room, a kitchen, a toilet, a bathroom. We have all of these rooms, but all of these rooms serve a different function, right? I want y'all to understand. So if you're said you are the temple. I want y'all to, to say a on that real quick. If you are the temple, where all things are involved in that. So, you know, we get to the temple, right? We got the we got the altar, right? You got the altar, but you got the altar, but who works the altar? You gotta have the priest, and you gotta have, I'm gonna go hit these places up. You got the holy place, and then you got the holy of holy. That's what I'm looking for, all right? All right, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, okay. I want to focus on the altar real quick. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead with the next one. So, go ahead and we're going to look at set number 71. All right? And please, y'all got to get this up. All right, set it up. <laughs> on the day when Moshe had finished setting up the tabernacle, he had anointed and consecrated it with all his furnishings. And he had anointed and consecrated the altar and all its what? Yeah, so. All right, so what's the first thing he had to do? Anoint it, set it up. He had, to set, he had to set it up, and then when I set it up, he had to anoint it and consecrate it, right? Yes. And he had to consecrate and anoint the altar. Go ahead, man. The altar of sacrifice starts the function of the temple. All right? Without the altar, Nothing else goes into play. That's right. That's right. If we have our understanding, it's supposed to be on meat, so I ain't going to go all back in history. Mm -hmm. But if you understand the function, how the temple works, the altar is part of the temple. Yes. And you know the altar is the first thing before you can, any priest can do anything. The altar has to go first. Right. It has to be anointed. It has to be consecrated, and it has to be that function for you able to go into the next part, right? Yeah. Keep this in your rule up. So if you are the temple, what is, what is your altar? Hmm. All right? Hallelujah. All right, let's keep on going. While the utensils operate as the functionaries of the temple. Uh -huh. All right. The altar of sacrifice starts the function of the temple, while the utensils operate as functionaries of the temple. So a functionary is what? The priests. The functionaries. 
the, the, the vessels, the uh, your utensils, all these things are functionaries of the temple. All right? So I really want you to understand that. What was the first thing? All right, we'll put it back. Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What was the first thing the priest did before they entered into the temple? They washed, right? They washed themselves or whatever. They had to go consecrate themselves with this washing and they had to anoint themselves, right? All right, you in the temple, you the priest, have you washed first? All right. Do y'all understand what that looks like? Huh? You do it every Shabbat? I don't know, I want y'all to really understand the function. Understand the functions in the temple. If the priest had to wash themselves and consecrate themselves before they even get to the altar. If you're at the temple, what function did you do to do that? You got what? You had to get immersed. You had to be ordained into this priesthood. You had to come into the Melchizedek priesthood before you can call yourself a what? You had to let Yahushua consecrate you. You had to be anointed with Yahushua. You had to go through the water to be able to come up as a priest. Yeah. All right? All right. All right. Y'all follow me now. All right. All right. Exodus 40. I want you to go ahead and read that since you had to read it. Okay. Exodus 40, <laughs> 6 through 15. If you got the sword, please bring it out. You're going to need to follow this. Exodus chapter 40, verse 6. And thou shalt set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle. So where's the altar? There's a reason for that. All right. Set the, uh, the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. And thou shalt set the lever, the lever between the tent of the congregation and the altar and shall put water therein. And thou shalt set up the court round about and hang up the hanging and the court gate. And thou shalt take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that therein and shall hollow it and all the vessels thereof and it shall be holy. It shall become what? Holy. It shall become holy. Again, where if you're in the temple, it shall alter holy. What is the holy view of the temple? I mean, what is the altar view of the temple? Keep going. 40 and 10. And thou shalt anoint the altar of the burnt offering and all his vessels and sanctify the altar. And it shall be an altar most holy. Uh oh. The altar should be what? Most holy. Do we know what the altar is, y'all? Yes. What is it? Somebody give it to me. It's the heart. Ooh. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. So the heart. I'm going to be here. If the heart is your altar, All right. that's supposed to be the most what? Holy. Holy. Uh oh. Boy, you can have forgiveness in your heart. Uh oh. All right. All right. If you're in the temple, your altar is the heart. All right. Hallelujah. All right. You have no hatred in your heart. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So have you gossip in your heart? Hallelujah. Can you. Is your heart consecrated? Is your heart really anointed? You're going to have to really say all this. For you to create the sacred space in you, the altar has to be right. The heart is the first thing you're dealing with before you can get your temple to function. That's right. That's why the root is deliverance. A ruka is the main point of thing. If you ain't healed, you are not functioning. You can have a name, but you can't even go to function your name if your temple is not operating. For so the temple, for the temple to be operating, it has to be a sacred space. But for that sacred space, your who has to dwell in there. That's right. 
But if you ain't got the altar lit, Come on. hey, you walking around here just as a body. You That's right. Come on. Come on with it. All right, let's keep on going. Exodus 40 and 11. And thou shalt anoint the leaven and his foot and sanctify it. And thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and wash them with water. And thou shalt put upon Aaron the holy garments and anoint him and sanctify him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt bring his sons. Oh, and yeah, that, 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 that. He has the ministry of the where? In the priest's oh, office. Man, how many of us can we even? He said, in the sacred place, how many can go into the priest's office? The altar had to be right. Hallelujah. All right, we'll keep on going. 14. And thou shalt bring his sons and clothe them with coats. And thou shalt anoint them as thou didst anoint their father, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. But their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Does it? Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So do we gotta understand that the altar is the heart, right? Yes. We gotta understand that the heart has to be consecrated, right? Yes. Just like they had to do with them, right? Yes. Alright, let's see. So let me land back. I want you to pay attention to that scripture. Because they're not only washing the utensils. They're washing the priests. That's right. The priest is a representation of the utensils. Right. The altar is a representation of your heart. The priest is the, the heart is the function, the body is the functionary. The altar is the function, the utensils is the functionary. Just pay attention, because everything they're doing with those utensils in the altar, they're doing the same thing to the priest. Just want to put that in your room. Right the priest represent, you know, the utensils and the heart represents, or the heart of the priest represents the altar. If you notice these things, you will see with some sacrifices, a lot of them had to cut the gold or cut the lamb, they had to pull the lamb on the altar, they had to throw the lamb on one side of the altar, and then they had to cut the same animal, bleed that animal out, but they had to sprinkle that blood on their right ear, yeah. on their right thumb, yeah. on their right big toe, yeah. and then they had to sprinkle blood, no, they had to throw it on the altar, take out the altar and they put it on them, and then throw it on their garments. Yeah. What did that represent? Stand up. That represented covenant. And it's deep because that's what happened to us. The Maureen at Pesach. I came home and my wife took out a stick this long out of my right big toe. And I was bleeding. Understanding that that was part of the covenant that he would make with the priest. It had to be bloodshed on the right big toe. Y'all hear it? Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 All right, the altar slash heart had to be cleaned, anointed, and what? Dedicated. Dedicated first before the utensils of the body came. The heart has to be dedicated, anointed, and cleaned. Do you know how they dedicated the altar? Oh, we gotta learn these things. I ain't know it either. I haven't learned. Pay attention to that. that is, that's what Christianity. Oh, I'm going on a little rant. Christianity messes up with that. Hey, you know, you weren't supposed to go in that Old Testament. Now, that's old and gone away and all these things like that. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> if you don't not understand the altar, if you don't understand these sacrifices, how you really know what your who should be? That's right. That's true. If you don't understand in the, in the, in the, in the, in a in a renewed testament, how do we not understand when he said, how can we really understand when he said you're the temple? Right. If we don't know the functionaries of the right. temple. Right. If we don't know the functionaries of the altar. There's a reason why it's in there. It's a lot. Yes. I used to skip over it. Yeah. There's a reason for these things. And it's very, very 
important that we keep this this day. Cause I'm gonna go ahead and say it when I was in prayer before we got started. This is gonna be a witness. It's gonna be a witness. If you, if we don't get our altar right, Hallelujah. you're done. That's right. Mm. Absolutely. If the temple don't function. That's right. And if the temple's not functioning, that means you don't what? Exist. All right. So just to lay it back real quick, there's a reason why it's very important that you get your altar right. That you get it dedicated, that you get it consecrated. That is anointed. It's very important why you have to get your heart right, your altar right. What do you do at the altar? What do you do at the altar? You sacrifice. You got to get your heart right. You got to get your altar right. Because there's things you have to burn. There's things you have to burn. Oh, um, yeah. And the most high don't accept what? You don't accept any kind of offer. Yeah. Right. So that means if your altar not right, you bring it forth a blemish sacrifice. Right. 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 And I want you to this man, I'm gonna go in that detail too, but I'm gonna touch on it a little bit. So if you have an altar, right? And you throw a sacrifice on there, what's the two sacrifices we give? Intercessions y'all can't touch. Praise and worship, what else? Your, yeah. Yourself. She already know the answer. It is yourself and your praise and your worship are the two sacrifices, right? So if you throw your praise on the altar, and if your heart ain't right, if your altar ain't consecrated, if your altar ain't dedicated, if your altar ain't anointed, is it accepted? No, no, no time. I want y'all to say on the room before no Isaiah 67. <laughs> so we about to dig into this real quick. Because I want you to understand where we go. First Corinthians chapter 3. What did it say? Were the, the items that were brought into the temple? He said your works will be burned up. Works of what? Gold? Gold, silver, wood, stubble. Precious stone, wood, stubble, and hay. Now, a few of those things. Yeah, I'm saying that. A few of those things can go into the Holy Ghost. What can go into the Holy Ghost? Wood, stubble, clay cannot go into the holies of holies. Gold can, silver can, the precious things can, but wood, stubble, and hay can't. So what in the world is the wood, the stubble, and the hay for? Come on, come on, what? It's the burn. What is it? It is to make the fire for your altar. So what does the word stuff on A represent? Drama. Go to the woods. Go back. So let's break this thing down real quick. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me reverse back. Let me go back, let me go back, let me go back. Now, that's the reason why. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Chapter 22. See, they got it. Some of y'all it. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, first let me start at verse 6. And Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering. He took this trial. Say trial. Hallelujah. And the burnt offering. Hallelujah. He, he did what he laid it on. Say on. On Isaac himself. So Isaac had to be born with trial. Because without the wood and stubble, you can't start a fire on your altar. So he had put the wood for the burnt offering. He laid it on Isaac. But then when you get down to verse 8, 
They said Abraham said, you who will provide himself a land for a burnt off for my son. So they both went up together, verse 9. And when they came to the place in which Jehovah had told them, Abraham built the what? Altar. He built the altar. There he laid the what? He laid the trauma in what? He laid the trauma in order. Because you are designed to bring order to there and laid the drama in order and then he found Isaac his son and then he laid him on the altar on top now of the trauma. Yes, yes, yes. At first the trauma was on top of him but then he only used his trauma, his wood to build a fire. Why? For the continuous sacrifice so he can offer his body up as a living sacrifice. Holy, robust, and acceptable unto the Lord. That's why you have to be born in trauma. You have to go through something. Because, let me come around here real quick. Because if you don't got no wood and stubble, you ain't got nothing to make the fire. You ain't got no fire. You ain't got 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 You are the gold. The gold is refined by fire. Gold is the only thing that can go into the holies of holies. The wood can. But your wood needs the wood so he can burn with that fire. He can use it. That person is laid on you. But now you're going to lay on top of it. And you're going to be going to burn off that up to your wood. It's not an animal sacrifice. The offering that you're making yourself is gold. In order for gold to be a fire, it got to go through fire. So stop complaining about your trauma. Stop complaining about what you went through. And understand that the word is designed. For the fire, so you can come out as we are going. I understand this. See, the problem that some people do is they take their wood and they try to take it into the holy place. Uh -oh. They try to take their wood into the holy place and build the, the tabernacle with wood. Uh -oh. They try to build the Ark of the Covenant with wood. But the Ark ain't built with wood. It's built with gold. It's built with the precious things. But some people try to take their trauma and build their whole world around it. But you can't use your trauma to build your whole world. You must use your trauma to refine the fire so that you can come out and build it. To acknowledge and understand and to know that our wood is designed to ignite the fire so we can offer ourselves up as a living sacrifice before you or a whole burnt offering. We then oh, understand, God. we then know, we then realize you got to understand your trauma is not over. Yes. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, come on! Come on. Come on. Your trauma ain't over. You got to go through more because that fire got to get shot. That fire is supposed to be still burning forever. A continuous fire. See, some of y'all came out of the room like, I'm done. I'm totally free. No, 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 no. 
my brother, my sister, that's just the top layer. It's still some more wood on the air. And the wood on the air is because it's not going to be too refined and like gold. You got to burn your altar more, but you got to make sure your heart is ready. You got to make sure the altar is ready. It's dedicated to be able to put the wood in this respectful place and put the gold in this respectful place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep going. Hallelujah. I hope y'all got that. Hallelujah. All right, so he went to the lot of it. Hallelujah. So, no, you know, no, you, you're not sorry. Hallelujah. <laughs> I hope you got that. That yeah. message was for us. It was appointed. He That's needed to bring it out. Message. That's the message you want to live for the rest of your life yeah. understanding that. So that means you understand why that altar is first. Why it is important for that altar to continue. See, you had priests whose job was to continue to feed that fire. Feed that fire. Uh oh, which vessel are you? Wait a minute. Certain priests only can deal with wood. Certain priests can touch the holy things. There were certain priests that with the wood that didn't deal with the gold. Because it's according to whose son or daughter you raise the charge of where you work at in the house. I know one of my sons didn't deal with the wood. He dealt with the precious things. They were the holies of holies. They were where the gold and the nice things were. But it was based on for whose son or daughter you are. Come on. So if you're not going to become a son or a daughter, if you're a son or a daughter of somebody else, your job, your position, your function may just be to deal with the charm or the wood. It may not be able to handle the holy things because you're not worthy of no, 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 for you to throw fire on that altar. Throw fire on that altar. Throw fire on that altar. You got to get that. You are the what? You are the temple. Now, if you ain't got that person to do that, guess what? Your fire is going away. He who will do it to the end shall be saved. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, Isaiah 66. Put this in your rule out because we're going to come back to this later on. One and two. This says to Yahuwah, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me? Are you asking me that? All right. And what is the place of my rest? Where's my sacred space? Where's my temple? Where's my altar? Where's the sacrifices? Where's the wood to burn this up? Where is my gold? Where is my silver? You need to, he asked me, where's it at? So I'm going to go a little bit So that means y'all had that conversation up there, right? And he said, man, you I'm ready to come down. I'm ready to come down. He said, not yet. He said, not yet, Abdul. He said, I'm gonna see you for another generation, for another generation, for another generation, right? You get ready for this wood that get thrown in your life. You get ready for that wood. Cause Yahushua said, hey, did he prepared a body for what? For me. Yahushua was ready for that wood. He took on all wood. All wood he took it on. Now, Abdil got a certain wood he's going to take. He went down there, but some reason, somehow, Abdil got, got a hold of that chicken, and his mind went gone. 
and find the gold. So Yahuwah said, man, hey, after that deal, that deal. Where, where's my temple? Remember, remember the Shabbat. Where is my what? Rest. Where is my sacred space? You, I, I spread you out. Remember, Yahuwah don't have this land, man. He has what? Us. Oh, y'all ain't watch the video. He has people spread out. So he got a temple in Texas. He got a temple right here in Kirkendall. He got a temple right there in New York. He got a temple right there in Augusta. He got a temple right there in Columbia. He got temples in OKC. Temples in Austin. Temples in Dallas. He got temples right here, right? He spread it out. You are the one. Okay, hey, some of these are forgot to hey, where's the altar? Where the priest at? I need my sacred space. This is what you were sent down here to do. All right? All these things and all these things my hand has made. And so all these things come to be, declares Jehovah. But this is the one who I will look. He who has a what? A humble and a contract ruach. And what? Tremble. Reverence. Reverence. But that heart has to be what? It has to be humble. It has to have a contract heart. That altar he's talking about, I'm looking for that altar. I'm looking for that heart. That's the heart of that we. All right, we'll keep going. Hallelujah. That one verse is right there. Matthew 23. Yes, yes. Matthew 23. Yes. Skip around and start at 12. All right, I want you to know the first thing I want y'all to notice, the first thing Yahushua does, he brings this out, then he goes into the woes. Y'all know about the woes, right? Yeah. All right. Matthew 23 and 12, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased or exalted. And he... Man, we need the ESV. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, he liked the ESV. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 23 and 12. Whoever exalt himself will be humble, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Whoever what? Whoever humbles, humbles himself will be exalted. All right, no more if you bring that up. Man, we gotta remain what? Humble. We gotta remain humble. And uh, he's talking to the righteous. Yeah. He's only talking to the righteous. The righteous, your altar's right now. You ready? That's right. It's time. That's right. All right, let's go. Drop down to what? Drop down to 16. Woe to you blind guides who say If anyone swears by the temple It is nothing But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple He is bound by his oath Alright listen You blind fools for which is greater The gold or the temple That has made the gold sacred Uh oh Uh oh What has made the gold sacred The what Alright let's keep going and you say if anyone swears by the altar, it is nothing. But if anyone swears by the gift that is on the altar, he is bound by his oath. You blind men, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? Come on. Hey, what makes it greater, the altar or your gift? The altar. Because why? What has to buy? What does the altar represent? The heart has to be sanctified. The heart has to be consecrated. The heart, the altar has to be purified. Then when you put on that altar, it could be Kodesh. So when you offer yourself up, it could be Kodesh. It's a pure praise. He said he had clean hands and a pure heart. Who had clean hands and a pure altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then you could sin. But your altar has to be correct. Yes. Now y'all understand the reverence of that, right? Now I want y'all really say long that if you have reverence to understand that, if you was one no priest, you all were no priest. But if we was in no priest, no Levitical priesthood in those days, your reverence would be on an all-time high messing with that altar. Yes, it would be. Yes, it would be. 
It will be on the all time high. If you do that blood on the north side, it's supposed to be on the south side. Hey, hey, guess what? That's it. That's it. So how come you don't reference the altar now? All right. All right. Hallelujah. How come you don't reference your heart now? All right. How you deal with your heart. How you don't consecrate this heart. I mean, this heart of yours. All right, we're going to keep on going. Uh, 21. And whoever swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. And whoever swears, oh, 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 oh. whoever swears by the temple swears by what? By him who dwells in it. Uh oh. So that means that, tem that temple is what? That temple is Kodesh. That temple is functioning. That temple has a sacred space. All right. All right. You know. 22. And by him who dwells in no, sorry, and whoever swears by the Shamaim swears by the throne of Alua and by him who sits upon it. All right. All right. Let's keep going. Twenty-three. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you, you what? Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Hypocrites! He did. He's talking about the what? Scribes and the Pharisees. Oh man, y'all gotta come on. Come on now. Come, come on. on. He's talking to the who? The Pharisees, the scribes, and the what? Hypocrites. hypocrites. Got the formality of godliness, but denying the power of their love. Your altar is trash. Say that. You understand me? I ain't saying anybody in particular, please. Don't do but hey, if you ain't functioning, that temple ain't functioning. If your who ain't dwelling in you, that means your temple ain't working. That means there's something ain't right. That's right. Some of us got evil altars. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, all right, I'm going to leave it alone. Go ahead, go ahead. All right. Uh, I think my battery is All right, there we go. Um, woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tied mint and deal and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. You blind guys tra straining out a net and swallowing it in pain. Camp, sorry. Man, you know that's easy. Yeah. Oh, camp, yes. Come on. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and in the plate and the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self indulgence. Hold on. Hold on. You got the head wraps on, we got the garments, the, the turbans, the uh, tunics. We got all of that. We outside praising. We outside going in a circle. We outside raising our hands. We out here shooting and shooting. What that shooting? What we got? Shouting and We doing all that. We doing all that. But yo, you have no reverence. You doing all that, but your heart is not right. You know that was what I. I'm glad the most high stopped us for going in and shot more going in and like that. Yeah. 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 You see a lot of people that came up because their altar wasn't right. Uh -huh. And you were about to go and praise. You were about to light up a fire, light your fire. And you was about to go give this strange offering. Come on. You was about to go in there at Temple of Baal. Uh huh. God. Can most I mean, son? Hallelujah. Moray brought it out. Moray brought it out. And then those gods they had temples. You know about the Eastern culture. Every culture, the Eastern had a temple. That's right. They had a sacred space for their God. That's where they were going to be. And they would give these rituals and everything, just like we do. I want y'all to say loud on that. Keep going. We had 25. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate, that the outside also may be clean. All right. 
Deal with your altar first. Deal with Aruka first. Yes. Deal with deliverance first. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Deal with yourself first. Hallelujah. We really got to understand that. All right, keep going. All right, number two more we're bringing out. Seven, number seven. Usually, um, I clip will bring this out for us. So I'm going to attempt, but I won't I'm gonna go with that because that's not my, my thing. It's dad, not, not junior. Anyway, so he always talk about the scientific part of this. So we talk about the altar being um, uh, our, our heart. So if you think about your body, you need your heart to live or you die. So if you, if you look up um, like different heart problems, like um, you know all the different heart diseases that there are, you Google it or whatever, it'll just tell you that the reason why people have those is because of lifestyle choices. That's right. So I'll just put that together like that. Hallelujah. All right, so we have number seven and 84. This is dealing with the dedication. Is your heart dedicated? Because the altar had to be dedicated, right? That's right. All right, let's go and bring it up. Numbers. Numbers 7 and 84. Numbers 7 and 84. This was the dedication offering for the altar on the day when, when it was anointed from the chiefs of Yasharel. 12 silver plates. 12, 12, 12 silver plates. All right. 12 silver basins. 12 golden dishes, each silver plate weighing 130 shekels and each basin 70. All the silver of the vessels, 2,400 shekels, according to the shekels of the sanctuary. The 12 golden dishes full of incense weighing 10 shekels a piece according to the shekel of the sanctuary. All the gold of the sanctuary, no, all the gold of the dishes being 120 shekels. All right, so we look at this, it's a lot of 12, but everything is right now is what? Silver and what? Oh. Uh-oh. This is the dedication of the altar. All the cattle for the burnt offering, 12 bulls, 12 rams, 12 male lamb, 12 male lamb a year old with their grain offering, and 12 male goats for a sin offering, and all the cattle for the sacrifice of peace offerings, 24 bulls, the ram 60, the male goat 60, the male lambs a year old 60. This was the dedication offering for the altar after it was anointed. How do you, question I want you to say, well, how do you dedicate your altar? There was a lot of silver and gold, a lot of animals that were sacrificed. How do you dedicate your altar? You were the temple, right? Right. How do you dedicate your altar? Somebody. Go ahead. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. Obedience. By what? Obedience. Obedience. Be wrong. Fast and pray. What do you say, boy? How do you dedicate your altar? How do you dedicate your heart? And your Meditation. 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 All right, give me, give me two of them. Go ahead, but huh? Activating your mind. Huh? All right. Huh? Studying. No desires in your time. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Reading and studying the Torah. All right, one more. Not the same thing. Watching the watching the the word. Yeah, you don't go. Go ahead. Hallelujah. 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 Denying yourself. Hallelujah. Deny yourself. Denying yourself. That's what it looks like to dedicate your altar. You have to be able to rec recognize 
when you dedicate your altar, part of that is being able to recognize what is your wood and your stone. Hallelujah. You got to be able to identify it so that you can prepare it. So you can carry it in your hands. So you can carry it on your back. And then so you'll know to lay it on the altar. But what we don't want to do is wear it. That's the truth. Hallelujah. We don't want to wear it. Because some of us, all of us, we all been temples. Mm. We all have been temples already. All life has been temples. Uh -huh. What kind of temple are we? Right. What are we the temple of? Our traumas and the things we went there have caused us. Everybody in this room may be the temple of your Lord. You've been the temple of your Lord. But you took abominations and you took unclean things and put them inside of your temple. Absolutely right. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. That's what we've done. So, go to the next slide. I want to bring out two things, two things before we go into that. Three things, really. When we walk in here, and when the Mount of King that's right there, what's the first thing he tells you? Prepare your heart. So that means you're supposed to have your what ready? Your altar. Your altar is supposed to be the first thing you have in here. But you're a priest, right? That's right. You're the temple. So what's the next thing you come in here when you do? Watch. Right? You consecrate yourself. You get you get yourself right, but you go to the elders and get what? You get prayed, you get anointed. You the offering and the offerer. You the whole shebang. You are the temple. Then you come in here, you move in your other function. Then you get washed. Then you are allowed to come in time to what? How many of us been walking here in the altars now, right? How many times we come in here and we try to create the sacred space, but there's always a roadblock in the head. It's a struggle. Come on, bring it out. We come up and we down. After your suffocation, it's a big pause. Yes. Yes. Say some of our altars are not right. Your altar in your heart has to be right. You gotta deal with that. Before you even come in here. Hallelujah. All right? Let me read these two verses and I'm done. Hallelujah. Uh oh. Come on. The altar ain't burning because you ain't putting the wood in there. You carrying the wood on top of you and you just want to keep the wood. You don't want to drop that wood off of that altar. You don't want to let that wood go. Drop that wood. You, 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 you cry about the same trauma every time. So your who would purify me? He said, put the wood in there. Come on, Tony. Let the fire off so that we burn out. Yeah. Hold the wood. Yeah. 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 Outside clean, but now hearts we ain't letting that go. That's good. We gotta let that out. We gotta let that altar burn. Because your temple ain't gonna function. You need that trauma. That's right. That's what we said earlier in the whole life. You need us some time. Yes, you do. Yes, yes you do. Yes, you do. All right, all right. Let me read this. Let me go on. First Peter. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Come on. Come on. Genesis one. Bring it back to Genesis. Right. Right. Genesis one verse two. Mm -hmm. I've said it before. You recreate every time you have a child. You recreate Genesis chapter one verse two. Because you are birth in chaos. So what does Genesis one and two say? It said, darkness covered the deep, right? right. And the ruach covered upon the walls. When you were in your mother's womb, you were in darkness. Right. Yeah. You were also in what? Water. 
water. But your Ruach hovered over the water. And then you were separated the waters and the water broke. And then light came forth. Because you are, you created the chaos. I was born and shaped in what? Iniquity. Uh oh. And in sin was I could see. So you can't complain about your drama. Yahushua was a carpenter for a reason. Because we're supposed to duplicate him to be able to build the house. You know what? Let me go. Let me go. Hallelujah. For us that, that know that what? When you come in the name of Yahushua, you're saying what? In the name is saying what? Destroyer of chaos. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when you say I'm coming in the name of Yahushua, you saying I'm coming in the in the name of Yahushua, which is Yah's salvation, the destroyer of chaos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let me go to First Peter two and five real quick. You yourself, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. Let me read that again. You yourself, like living what? Living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, as a what? A temple to be a condes priesthood. And to offer spiritual sacrifice. How you offer spiritual sacrifice? What do you need? You need an altar. You need that altar to offer a spiritual sacrifice. To be able to be acceptable and acceptable to Allah through Yahushua. So if you were the altar and he was the lamb that was sacrificed, how many of y'all put that lamb on your altar? Uh oh. He was the sacrificial lamb. If you're the temple, a lamb, hey, you got you to take on that sacrifice. That lamb had to be slain on your altar. But when you slay that altar, if you understand how it goes, you had to put that same blood that was on that animal, you had to put it on you, right? Uh-oh. And even some of them altars, you had to what? Eat it. That's right. You had to come in covering with that land. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. Keep going. The last one. The last one. Matthew six, verse twenty and twenty-one. So is that why the ram was in the bush? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Come on, guys. Man, we'll be y'all there. Man, y'all listen to part two. Hallelujah. All right, Matthew six twenty through twenty-one. But lay up for yourself treasures in the Shemaims, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your what? There will your altar also be. How many of us have our altars in the Shemaim? Again, you being built up as what? Spiritual what? Houses. Spiritual houses. So that means you got a spiritual temple. So do you have a spiritual altar? Hallelujah. You got to perceive these things. This is the only way you're going to activate this temple. It starts with your heart. Hallelujah. All right, so I got great shalom. I love you all. We love you too. Oh, All right, so I want y'all to look at Jeremiah 17. And what was it? Oh. And nine. All right, yes. All right, yes. All right. Yeah. You don't believe that, <laughs> 17 and nine. You don't believe it. Oh, yeah. We don't believe it. Nine verse nine to 10, all right? Yeah. The heart is deceitful. Oh, 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 But the heart is deceitful. I can't be the altar. Oh, I heard it. I heard it. We're going to crack that real quick. Hallelujah. 
The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? There we go. I am who will search the what? Heart. All right. And test the reins. The reins. All right. So you break that reins down in the KJV version. Yeah. In the KJV version, that turns that word is another word for vessel. So I'm going to reread this. I, Yahuwah, search the altar and test the vessel. Mm. Yeah, I, get that. I, Yahuwah, search the altar and test that vessel to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. He said, your altar and bring produce silver and gold. So we're going to talk about vessels. So a lot of us took on the traumas of the world. And those traumas of the world inside, inside of our temples. So what we try to do is we try to serve you more. We try to serve you, but we don't do it the way you wants us to do. We want to do it the way we want to do it. We want to go by the Torah of our lives. We want to go by the things that we pick up. I know you say do it this way, but I'm gonna do it this way. The same thing gonna be accomplished. I'm being obedient. I'm just gonna do it this way. So we're going to go to Deuteronomy real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Go ahead. Verses 1 through 4, and then we're going to skip to 29 through 32. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. These are the statutes and rules that you shall be careful to do in the land of Yahuwah. The Lord of your fathers has given you to possess all the days that you live on the earth. You shall surely destroy all the places where the nations whom you shall dispose serve their gods on the high mountains and on the hills and under every green tree. You shall tear down their altars and dash in pieces their pillars and burn their ashram with fire. You shall chop down the carved images of their gods and destroy their names out of the place. Yes, you not. shall not worship Yahuwah, your Allah, in that way. Yes, but you yeah. shall seek the place that Yahuwah, your Allah, will choose out of all your tribes to put his name yes. and make his habitation there. Hallelujah. Yes. Verse 29. Yeah, but listen. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere. Mm. All right. Verse 29. When Yahuwah your Lord cuts off before you the nations whom you go in to dispose and you dispose them and dwell in their land, take care that you be not ensnared to follow them after they have been destroyed before you and that you do not inquire about their God saying, how did these nations serve their God? That I also may do the same. Yes. You shall not worship the Yahuwah, your Aloha, in that way. For every abominable thing that Yahuwah hates, they have done for their gods. But they even burn their sons and their daughters in the fire to their gods. Everything that I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to, to it or take from it. So, it goes back to reverence. Because if we reverence Yahuwah, then we're going to do what Yahuwah asks us to do. Remember, we're talking about the altar. We're talking about reverence, right? We can't do nothing outside of what he tells us to do. Remember Joshua and Jericho, right? If he deviated from any of the instructions that Yahuwah told him to do, he wouldn't have been successful. And we also got to be careful with doing that because we can summon something else. Yeah. Yes, sir. 
we can open up a different portal. So, because y'all know these temples, I think some more is here can be occupied. Right? Yes. Yes. We know that, right? Yes. Let me land back when you get that real quick. So if you out here doing the dugging, out here on this floor, you're going to a whole nother God. Yes. Come on. You out here cracking that soldier boy used to call back in my day. There you go. <laughs> hey, you out here getting you crazy. Hey, that's to a whole nother level. Right. You know, you had those flashbacks and do all the little crazy things. The way you sing, the, the sound that comes out. I will more or less say you can't put a worldly beat and try to come out there and sing into your hood. That's right. That's right. It's already an offer to something. It already has an altar. You just went to that altar. It's already an altar. All right. Hallelujah. So we're going uh, to continue to build. 2 Kings chapter 23. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 4. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 4. And the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, and the priest of the second order, and the keepers of the threshold, to bring out the temple of the Lord. Listen. All the vessels made by made for Baal, for Asherah, and for all the host of Shamayim. Wait, wait, that's other than Uh-oh. Yeah, because he said of the Shammai. Read that again, King. All right, hallelujah. Yes, and the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, and the priest of the second order, and the keepers of the threshold to bring out of the temple of Allure all the vessels made for Baal, for Asherah, and for all of the hosts of the Shammai. What vessels do we have that was made for Baal? Uh-oh. That's a question. What vessels do we have? What vessels do we possess that was made for Baal? That we, destroyed. That we have not destroyed. TV. Pride. 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 Us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all gotta get off that physical. Christianity. Come on. Keep going, I keep going. Uh, he burned them outside of Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and carried their ashes to Bethel. So he burned them where? Outside. And took them outside the camp. Took them outside the camp and burned. And burned. Mm. You know that's what they do to the witch, right? That's right. They took her outside of the camp and, and stoned her, then they burned. Where we going, Aki? So you got to do that to yourself. You got to dedicate your altar. The first thing you got to do is do what? Deny yourself. Don't come in with no explanation. Don't come in with no excuse. Deny self. Understand what you're signing up for. Count the cost. Be committed. Be dedicated. Because if you do that, he'll allow you to identify the traumas. The things that cause you to do the sin. The things that cause you to fall short. He'll identify the traumas. And when he showed you the traumas, what you supposed to do with them? You're supposed to start the fire at your altar. Hallelujah. Give me um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 19 through 21. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. But a Lewis firm foundation stands bearing this seal. Yahuwah knows those who are his and lets everyone who names the name of Yahuwah depart from iniquity. iniquity yes. Now in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone clean, cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use. Set apart as Kodesh, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not for our own work. Not for every good work, but doing it our own way. We got to be, Yahuwah is specific. What I mean by that? 
That just means that we got to be submitted and be able to submit to the order whatever comes down from your Lord. We live in a time that we got to be ready, we got to prepare our hearts to accept and be submitted to everything that comes down from your Lord. Right? What we talked about in Shadow Walk, we talked about the book being shut up, right? We talked about the book of Daniel, right? But when he told Daniel to shut up the book, he wasn't reading the book. Right, right, right. He wasn't reading. So we living out the book right. of Daniel. Right. So it's going to be things coming down that we got to be prepared to accept right. and submit to. Right. Because this is going to be a strange salvation. Yeah. You ain't never seen a lot of this stuff before. Yeah. We got to be ready to submit. Yeah. We got to be ready to lay our traumas on the altar. Right. We got to be ready to, to allow your Lord to identify the part of us that don't burn. That's right. Because the part of us that don't burn is the only part of us that can function. Come on. Hallelujah. That's the only part of us that can function. The part of us that don't burn is the only thing allowed into the temple. Hallelujah. Pure. Pure. Hallelujah. But the reason why we got to be burned is because the part of us that don't burn don't care about what room you placed in. The part of us that don't burn don't care about what room we got to play in. We don't care if we're spoon. We don't care if we're a fuck. We don't care if we're a man. We don't care about nothing. The part of us that don't burn. But the part of us that do burn, we can't take that inside. Hallelujah. So let me keep that with you. So let's, 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 let's reread this again. Oh, your Lord's firm foundation stand, stands bearing this sin. Your Lord knows those who I is. He knows who I is because he's been knowing it before the foundation of the world. Let everyone who names the name of your Lord depart from the iniquity. Now, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also with a clay. Some of our people use some of this honor. We brought it out in Shango. You got a bowl you eat cereal out of, which is a vessel. And you got a toilet that you use. That's a vessel. That's designed. But it's in the house. In this house, we know it's honorable and dishonorable vessels. But they all won't be used for your Lord's glory. Yeah. Come on, the toilet. Yeah. The toilet is used for glory. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, come on, come on, somebody hold it. So, therefore, check this out. If anyone cleanses himself from what? What is this? So, if anyone cleanses himself from trauma, come on. Yes. Hallelujah. He will be a vessel for honorable use. Set apart as open. Useful to the master of the house. Ready. Every good work. And start using your traumas for what is created for. See, we, 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 we really ain't ready. No, no, we really ain't ready. No. We really ain't ready. Because I, you know, a lot of our hair is, is bringing out. You can't do it your own way. That's right. See, some of y'all just follow and you don't agree. Mm. That's true. That's true. Certainly, you go on with your, your body, but your heart ain't really in it. Mm. See, you don't do that in your Ocean's Kingdom, but you can't do that in your Ocean's Kingdom. Come on. Right. See, when your Ocean's gets an order out, mm -hmm. it can't be. I don't get that. Come on now. But I follow it anyway. Uh -huh. No. Your heart got to be made up. Oh, yeah. See, we shout the ancient past. Come on. All right now. We don't want to live. Come on. But are we really ready? All right. No, I ain't gonna go there. Oh no, 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 no. Are we really ready for the ancient past? Because see, when you fully get in the ancient past, can't nothing modern come with it. That's right. 
Come on, 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 it's gonna be some things you have to do that you ain't gonna understand. Right. But only those who got ears to hear will be able to hear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because once you reach it, you can't bring nothing modern with you. Because once a drop of modern get involved, you ain't ancient no more. That's why I say we're not in the light right now. But we're walking towards the light. Because as we walk towards the light, more things will be revealed. See the darkness, it look like you got all black on. Mm -hmm. But once you get close to the light, you'll realize, hold on, this is a blue shirt, and these are black pants. Mm -hmm. I thought this was all black. But what's happening is, as close as you get to the light, there's the more revelation is coming yes, out. Yes, yes. So you got to understand, there's going to be things. This ancient path don't consist of nothing modern. This ancient path requires your full obedience to Yahushua. Because Yahushua's kingdom is not a democracy. See, a democracy is modern. Yahushua's kingdom is a dictatorship. It's what he says, how he says, what he says, the way he says, and you better do what he says and you out. So I know we talk about ancient past. We clap. We got to understand. The closer we get to our ancient past, it's the more modern we're going to have to let go. So are you truly ready? Oh, they ain't ready, y'all. They scared. They heart dropping right now. They trying to know what in the world is. I don't got nothing to play. I don't got nothing. But I know what you wish. You, you be, understand where you going. Well, let me get out now. You can't go nowhere. You made a cut. Hey, yeah. uh, so because even if you leave here, you still seal to that cover. Oh, yeah. Come on now. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna go to Exodus 37. 16 to 24. Exodus 37. 16 to 24. So let's read. And he made the vessels of pure gold that were on the table. Its plates, its dishes, for instance, and its bowls and flagons, which to pour drink off. He also made the lampstand of what? Pure gold. Wood and clay. Pure gold. Pure gold. He made the lampstand of hammer work, in its base, its stem, its cups, its claxes, and its flowers, what well, was of world one piece with it. And there were six branches going out of its sides. Three branches of the lampstand on the one side of it, and three branches of the lampstand on the other side of it. Three cups made like almond blossoms, each with plants and flower on one branch. And three cups made like almond blossoms, each with plants and flowers on the other branch. So the six branches going out of the lampstand. Right. And on the lampstand itself were four cups made like almond blossoms with their glasses and flowers. In a clack, in a in a collapse of one piece, with it under each pair of six branches going out of it, their collapse. Yeah, I hope I'm saying that word right. Collapses in their branches were one piece with it. The whole of it was a single piece of hammer work of pure gold, and it made it seven lamps in its tongues and its trays of pure gold. He made it all its utensils out of the talent. Of wood. Pure gold. Pure gold. So, in order to be pure, get pure gold, it's got to go through the wood. Fire. The fire. So, say now, we got to be done 
What is he talking about? The lampstand, right? Yes. Mm. That's the seven assemblies. Mm. That's part of the mantle. Mm. So not only do you got to go through your own fire, you got to go through fire with your mantle. Mm. You got to go through the fire that's coming this way for the nation. Mm. And if you're not done with your own, uh -huh. you ain't going to be able to survive there. Mm. Nope. Mm. You ain't going to be able to survive there. Mm. You got to be done with your own so that you can function with your own. Mm. To deal with that. Mm. First Chronicles 28. There's a plan, y'all. It's a blueprint. Mm. Going back to Genesis, it's a blueprint. It's a plan. Can we follow the blueprint? The house is not built with wood and stone. It's built with what? Silver and gold. Silver and gold. That's what it's built with. First Chronicles chapter 28, verses 10 through 19. Be careful now, for Yahuwah has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. All right. Be, Be careful now. For Yahuwah has chosen who? You. You to build a what? House. For the what? Sanctuary. What's next? Be strong, be strong, be strong and do it. it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Keep going. Then now he gave Slomo his son the plan of vestibule of the temple and of it houses and his treasures and his upper rooms and his inner rooms and chambers to functionaries and of the room for the mercy seat and a plan of all that he had in mind for the courts of the house all the surrounding trade chambers the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the treasuries for dedicated gifts for the divisions of the priests and of the Levites and all the work notice it said priests and Levites and all the work of the court service in the house of Yahuwah for all the vessels for the service in the house of Yahuwah, the weight of gold for all the golden vessels for each service, the weight of silver vessels for each service, the weight of the golden lampstands and their lamps, the weight of the gold for each lampstands and their lamps, the weight of silver for a lampstands and its lamps, according to the use of each lampstand in service, the weight of gold for each table for the showbread. The silver for the silver tables, the pure gold for the forks, the basins and the cups for the golden bowls mm. and the weight of each, mm. for the silver bowls and the weight of each, mm. for the altar fence that made by refined gold is number gold and silver. Mm. And its weight also is planned for the golden chariot of the cherubim that spread their wings, covered the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah. All this is made clear to me in writing from the hand of Yahuwah. All the work to be done according to the plan. This right here is a perfect picture. This Ark of the Covenant. Yadavim, if you want to understand what it says, this is a perfect picture of what's being built. Right here. Right here. Hallelujah. 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 So, we're all vessels of the temple. But we can't get in the temple unless we're what? Pure gold. And a lot of us have different weights. We have different weights. We have different seats. We have different orders. But every vessel is service. Every vessel is a servant. You might be a spoon. Don't be envy of the lamp. Because you have to mature as a spoon. You have to learn, you have to be trusted as a spoon. Can you who will trust you as a spoon? You may do some well, he might promote you. Hallelujah. 
But how are you gonna promote you? He gonna tell you to do what? Deny yourself. Go back into the fire. Go back into the fire. Come out another vessel. Go back into the fire. Come out another vessel. Go back into the fire. But whatever function you have, master the function. Mature in the function before you try to move on to the next. Whatever he has given you, master the function. And no matter what it is, if you sweep the flow, be the best flow sweeper it is. Because it's all giving glory to your Lord. And no vessel in that temple receiving glory. It's all to glorify the Lord. It is not our house. We're just allowed to stay there. We're just allowed to stay there as long as we serve. As long as we can be of use to the master. Can we be of use? As a vessel, can we be of use? Can he use us? Can he use us to bring him to glory? Can he use us? Can you something? Go ahead. If you notice, all these things were dedicated to the temple. Every single vessel was dedicated to the temple. That means that whatever service you had to do, it was strictly for the temple. That means it was strictly for Yahuwah's use and Yahuwah's use only. So if you were a vessel of gold and silver, that thing has to be dedicated. It's like the altar has to be dedicated. Your heart has to be dedicated. Like your treasure. See, your treasure is stored. Your heart is where your treasure Your treasure is where your heart is at. All that has to be dedicated. So what does that look like if you are the temple? That means your time. That means your finances. That means everything about you is dedicated for your Uber's use. Everything had to be dedicated for your Uber's use. Like you said, don't don't worship it. It's made out of gold, right? They said, don't make a hope with the gold. What makes the gold sacred? What? The temple. But in order, if it's to be a temple, that means Yahuwah has to what? Resign there. That means Yahuwah has to be in that sacred space. Yahuwah makes the vessel. Yahuwah makes the instruments. Yahuwah makes everything that thing what it is. Yes. Yahuwah gives it. It's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's used, but it's, uh, it's validation. Hallelujah. Your Lord gives these vessels their validation. That's what it looks like to be validated by Yahuwah. Hallelujah. A vessel is submitted to its hand. Mm -hmm. brought it out at Shavuot. He used the example of the water bottle. Yeah. That water bottle in his hand will do whatever he will that water bottle to do. Right. That water bottle is only focused on being a water bottle. Right. That's it. It has no will of his own. If he put that water bottle down, and he don't drink out of that bottle, he put it down, that water bottle don't exist. Christ, stand up in this chair, this chair don't exist. But while I'm sitting here, this chair is only focused on one thing. Hold me up. That's it. Can we be used? As a vessel in the temple of you. Can we be used? We can't come in there and be a chair and be like, you know what? I can hold you up. But what I learned is, I'm going to put five legs on it. I know you want four legs, but I'm going to do five. It's still going to accomplish the same thing. I'm just going to do it the way I know how to do it. Nah. We can't do that. We got to submit to the handler. What thus said he will. That's it. This is not do what thou will. I know we did that. We know we all know uh, we have to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. I know we don't believe that we do what thou will, but some of us still do what thou will. Even, even doing that, serving your will. We still try to do what thou will. 
Can't do that. Can't right. I share my testimony. Mm. I came to HRT. I was a graphic designer mm. and I did video editing and websites. Mm -hmm. And I took a lot of that's what I was gonna do. When I first got here, first thing I wanted to do was donate a website to the track. That's what I did, website. Right? I came here where I sit, in the back, with the camera, with my replacement. But you still here though. Right. But the condola from my chair in the back, she in the front, out in the yard. But that's what I wanted to be. That's why I was comfortable. I want to be. I want to serve you more. But I want to do it my way. But we can't do that. We have to do what does say you want. We have to be what He called us to be. We have to function how He called us to function. So identify who you are in this hour, in this season. Identify who you are. Am I looking at? Or are we looking at each other? When we look at each other, and are we beholding the part of us that don't burn? Mm. Mm. Is it silver and gold in this room? Mm. Or have your gold not been revealed yet? Mm. Have your gold not been revealed yet? Have you not thrown your wood in the fire? Say loud that, Miss Papa. We got a reality check at Shabbat Wall. Say loud that. Why? Because only gold is allowed in the temple. That's it. If you got, if your gold have not been revealed yet, it's going to be found out. How? By the fire. You're going to go to the fire regardless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, uh, so I want to make a, a, another example. This is for, the, for my lovely Yala D. So, uh, Cohen made an example. He said during supplication, or someone was saying that during supplication or prayer, sometimes there's this gap. There's this pause. That's because we're waiting for someone that's not utilizing their function. Because what we're saying is he just walked us through and said, we, what, once we come through the door, we pass, and, and now the, uh, the block says, prepare your hearts. Everybody in here has a function. Just because you don't have like that seat or that title, there's still something that you're supposed to be doing that's very important. So if you're sitting on the side and you're just watching, or you're sitting on the side and say, oh, that looks good, you're, it's almost like a, 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 a scale that's unbalanced, basically. Because what, I, it's that script that Kofin gave is we all trying to, the, the main goal y'all said at the beginning, I'm gonna read this or I'm gonna misquote it, is that we're trying to create the sacred space. So we all walked through that door, walked through the path, came into the holy of holies. Everybody in here, from youngest to oldest, Yaladin, are coming in here to create the sacred space. So if you're not praying, and I'm not just talking about y'all, that's, that's us too. If I'm not praying, if you're not praying, if she's not praying, we can't create that sacred space. So if someone comes in here and they alter is not ready, they come in here distracted. We read that sign every time we walk in here. You come in here wrong. So you're not just affecting you and thinking, I'm told, but it don't matter. You're affecting the whole space. It's the whole space you're growing off. Because that gap may be, it's, it's revealing to us, okay, well, somebody came in here wrong, or somebody is not using their function. We know when we're not functioning, you're what? You did. And that's from the youngest to oldest. So if, I, I'm saying this because I think that some people feel like, well, my, I don't, I don't. Once you walk through that door, you saying that you do. You coming into agreement. So like, once you walk in here, you have to do whatever it is that you're being told to do through your leadership. We, we follow the blueprint that we've been given. Mm -hmm. So like they're saying, I know some people are like, I'm not sure my function. You've been revealed something. That's right. You've been shown something at this point. Mm -hmm. You've been given your Hebrew name. 
talk to someone and, and get a better understanding. I don't know, I don't know how to will when I first came here. I never heard of that mm. back in what, 2017? When we said Black Rock Park? Mm. I didn't know what that was. Mm. I went to, to Eva and I said, can you help me? I held her hand and said, do it with me because I don't get it. Mm. Well with me. I don't, I don't understand what this feeling is. So we have all the tools here that we shouldn't be walking in the dark. Us saying, I don't, I don't get it, so I'm gonna just stand here. You're holding the rest of us back. That's right. That's You're right. holding the rest of us back. We trying to go. That's right. Get there. That's right. So don't continue to do that. Come in here, right? Go through this. Go through. Wash your hands. Do what you're supposed to do. Have your altar right, so that we can get there. Is we talk about this sometimes with the the. the um, when we come together with the Shakaya Dot, the three string chord, the dancers, the Jepe players, the intercessors, we only got one time. That's it. That's it. If you only got one time, it's like I, I compare it to like I know it's not not ideal, but I compare it to like when they go in this outer space. They say they're trying to break that atmosphere. Yeah. Well, that's what they tell us. You only got one time to do it, mm -hmm. and sometimes we. We, you know, we, we don't stay on the track. The, the, the track is, it, it's, it's bad, it's turbulence. Mm -hmm. We only got one time to get it, so we need everybody, from the youngest to the oldest. I'm, I'm glad y'all got quiet because y'all been talking the whole time. Hallelujah. But I hope that y'all have an understanding of the word that's going forward. Because it's not just for us, it's for all of you. Some of y'all get visions. Yes. Yes. If you not share something powerful today, they probably inspire somebody that's five times her age. Mm -hmm. And we, uh -oh. we <laughs> but we need each other, the whole room, to get to that second phrase. So sometimes when you come in here and you're not right, that's why somebody's good. Are you, did you, did you, are you okay? Because it's, it's, we can see it. So but we need everybody to get there because we're all going to try and get to that sacred space. So come in right. And stay right when you leave. Hallelujah. Don't get right every time you come in. Because remember, reverence, the war. He's all seen. Don't just get right when you come in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. If I may, I want to land back on what the coach was saying. She's right. When we don't, we don't come in and we don't do our part and uh, by the start of a function, I just want to say.